It's Jordan here from Food and Drink Stories, bringing you amazing food produce stories and the inside tricks from inside the catering industry. Three course meals, a lot of effort to do at home. However, they're well worth it for special occasions. I'm gonna talk you through a really easy and simple to do Italian inspired three course menu that you can do at home. Um, it's really simple, super tasty, super fresh, and I hope you enjoy. To kick us off, I've chosen a fresh and vibrant orange burrata bruschetta. This is my classic take on a tomato bruschetta. To make this simple starter, you will need good quality bread, one orange, some coriander seeds, some fennel seeds, one burrata, some fresh rocket, and some olive oil. The reason I chose burrata over mozzarella, it has that much more creamy, luxury, flavour to it than an ordinary mozzarella and if you haven't tried it before it's really worth it. To prepare the orange simply top and tail and then with a sharp knife gently peel around the outside you want to make sure you remove as much of the white pith as possible. Place a non-stick pan on the stove add a dash of water and 35 grams of sugar heat this gently until it changes into a darker colour to form a caramel. Once it is at this stage add your orange cut side down. Also, half a teaspoon of coriander seeds and half a teaspoon of fennel seeds. By adding them at this stage, you get an incredible flavour out of them, but they also become candied in terms of their texture. Cook the orange for around four minutes, reducing the heat once the orange goes in. What you want to do is leave that orange in the caramel to infuse all the flavours from the orange, the coriander and the fennel together. Heat and decant into a bowl. If you have not got any liquid or dressing, add another little splash of water. To assemble, slice some fantastic quality bread and gently toast. Top this off with a little bit of olive oil, then add on your quarters of orange. Cut the burrata into large chunks, making sure you get as much gooiness on as possible. Drizzle over with the orange cooking liquor, making sure you get plenty of seeds on there. Season with salt and pepper to bring out the flavor. Then you can add on your dressed rocket in a little bit of olive oil. And again, another little drizzle of olive oil on the top. And that is my fennel and burrata bruschetta served. Next up, main course time. And it is a beautiful, decadent, indulgent, silky prawn and chorizo risotto. The reason I've chosen this is it's one pot wonder, nice and simple, beautiful, fresh, tasty, punchy ingredients. List of ingredients for this, uh, 60 grams of diced chorizo, best quality you can get, 100 grams of king prawns, two shallots, two garlic, half a red pepper, glug of white wine, 150 grams of arborio risotto rice, 450 mils of water, one veggie stock cube, butter, parmesan, and a bit of a lemon to finish. To start, I just prepare the vegetables. So I peel my shallot, my garlic and my pepper, dice them all nice and relatively small and place that in a bowl, leave to one side. With the chorizo, this is a really good quality chorizo. Cut the piece off that you need, then put a small slice down the side and remove the skin. You need to make sure you remove the skin, otherwise it's gonna be stuck in between your teeth. Dice this up relatively small, Place the chorizo then in a warm pan with a little glug of olive oil. The reason we do this first is to release all those fantastic flavors out of that smoked chorizo. The chorizo has been cooking for three, four minutes, add in our vegetables to it, along with a large pinch of dried thyme. Once the vegetables are softened, there should be a beautiful smell running through your kitchen. At this stage, add in your rice. We're gonna fry that rice very gently in the chorizo -y oil, just for about two minutes. This is gonna, again, bring out the flavor of our rice more. Add in some salt and pepper, a decent amount our veggie stock cube, a large glug of white wine, around 75 mils. This is gonna give fantastic flavor and sharpness to the risotto. Once the wine is reduced, we can gradually start adding in our hot water. The ratio is three to one, so 150 grams of rice, 450 grams of water. Add the water gradually in stages until the rice has absorbed that liquid. Taste the risotto as you're cooking it. The more water that is absorbed, the softer the rice will become. We're aiming for an ever so slight al dente finish, a tiny bite 
left to the rice. Once the rice is 95% cooked, remove from the heat and just leave to sit for a few minutes. What this will do is allow the rice to just soak up any excess liquid in there and finish cooking. At this stage, I drop in our king prawns and then we start finishing with our butter, our parmesan, a little bit of lemon zest and some freshly chopped parsley. Be generous on the butter, you need around 85 grams. Once it's all incorporated, it should feel really nice and silky and smooth. Taste and see if it needs more seasoning. We can always add a little touch more lemon juice. You need that little hint of zestiness at the end. Place into your bowls. Finish with a little bit more grated parmesan on the top and a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. Last but certainly not least is my stunning chocolate and raspberry mousse. Um, this is adapted for hazelnut flavour, but can be adapted to many different liqueurs and toppings. Ingredients for this, incredibly simple. 135 grams of dark chocolate, any chocolate available. 35 grams of sugar, 80 ml of water, a handful of raspberries and two eggs, easy. For this version, I've opted to pair it with hazelnut. So I'm using Frangelico liqueur, which is an incredibly stunning Italian liqueur. And then we're gonna finish that with chopped hazelnuts at the end. However, you could use Cointreau and fresh orange or amaretto and crushed amaretti biscuits. Any of them will be fantastic. So placing the chocolate and water in a bowl, place it on a, what we call a bain marie, that is a low simmering pan of water, making sure that the bowl does not actually touch the water. You just want the steam to using to heat and melt the chocolate. Separate the eggs, keeping the yolks and reserve them for later. With the whites, whip them up by hand in a small paddle mixer. Um, slow, gradually adding in your sugar into it until you get firm peaks. Once the chocolate mixture has fully melted in, is nice and silky, remove from the heat and leave to cool. This will need around five to 10 minutes. You can tell by the fact it's cooled down, it'll have thickened quite a lot. Add in your two egg yolks, one into the cool chocolate and stir heavily. Once the egg yolks are in, add a splash of your chosen uh, liqueur and then we can gradually start adding in the egg white mix. Add the egg whites in in three, three or four batches. The reason you do this is the first batch you add in, you can be quite aggressive in mixing. As the more stages you add in, you need to be more and more gentle because you do not want to beat the air out that you've whipped into that egg white. Once fully combined, pour into your serving glasses. Once you've got about halfway in, add a sprinkling of raspberries and top up the remaining mousse. That will need to set in the fridge for around four hours. Once the mousse is set in the fridge for four hours, they should be set perfectly. Remove from the fridge, and I've chosen to garnish mine with some more fresh raspberries and then a sprinkling of roasted chopped hazelnuts. It's my delicious, simple, Italian-inspired three-course menu. Hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, please post in the comments how you got on and we'll see you on the next video.